Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Um, so I have actually recorded this video like three times now, but one time I forgot to, uh, my microphone was turned off and uh, yeah, so I'm quite frustrated right now. But let's try to do this again. Welcome to part one of the new Python web application tutorial series. Um, so before I start, let me tell you this. The reason why I'm creating this series again is because people complain about the video resolution in my previous videos. So I'm doing it again with some better resolution. And also before we start, let me tell you that you have this videos require you to have some sort of uh, knowledge of the terminal or uh, bash um, because that is what I will be using. Um, I will not be using some graphical file manager or something like that. I will be using the terminal, all right? So we will create the same sort of application that we created in the previous series, which is a web application to create notes. Right. Um, so let's start by creating a directory called note app. Then we're going to go inside of the node app directory. We're going to create another node app directory inside here. We're going to touch. We're going to create a file inside that node app directory called init.py. Underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot pi. Cool. And this file, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot pi, tells Python that this is a module or a package. So, right. We also want another file inside of that node app directory called app.py. We will keep our Flask application inside app.py. Now we will need another file as well in our outer node app directory called underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot pi. This is our starting point for our application. Now. This is basically our uh, file structure or project structure. We're going to have a node app directory with a underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot pi file and another node app directory inside of the node app directory with an app dot pi file and then underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. Now let's open up our project in an editor. I will use graphical vim but you can use whatever uh, editor you are most comfortable in. So let's first go into our app.py file. And we're going to start with importing Flask. We will, be, we will be using Flask for our web application. And Flask is a microservice framework to create web applications. Or uh, I think that is what they... Uh, uh, let me just open up one of those and let's move that to uh, uh, to the there we go and there we go right so if we go to flask website and look it up flask is a oh, flask is a micro framework for Python um, right so let's go back to our code, app.py file, and we're gonna start by importing Flask. From Flask, import Flask. Now this is important. From lowercase Flask, import, from lowercase f Flask, import uppercase f Flask, okay? And then we're gonna do app equals Flask name. So, this is basically our Flask application instance that we will be using. Now, let's go into the main file and do from note app, which is our package or module, dot app import app. Then we're gonna do if name is equal to main app dot run debug equals true. That is basically all for our Flask application to actually work. 
but <clears throat> we need to do some other things first. We're going to create a virtual env. And virtual env is basically, it's not a virtual machine, it's basically just a directory to keep packages and junk like that to not get our system dirty. Right, so first you need to install virtual env, and to do that you can basically just type if you're using Debian or Ubuntu, you can do this. I'm using Debian. I'm not sure what the command in uh, in the dis Linux distribution that you are using would be. Or if you're using Windows or something like that. I would not recommend you to use Windows. Um, but, um, I mean, Google is your friend. You can use Google to, uh, to find out how to install Python virtual env. But in Debian and Ubuntu, you do this sudo apt install python virtual env. Now I already have this installed so it's gonna tell me that python virtual env is already installed. So yeah I can use it right away. virtual env dash p slash usr bin and now it's basically time to choose python version. You can use whatever Python version you want to use. I would recommend Python 3 and above because Python 2 is about to be, well, it's going to be deprecated in the near future, I think. So let's use Python 3. Python 3, and I'm going to use that one, actually. You can use whatever you want. Um, space dot slash venv. Right. <clears throat> so now we've got a virtual env. Uh, but we need to source it as well. So to do that, type source space dot slash vim bin activate. And if everything is working correctly, you should see this then thing here, uh, which will sort of stick to, it will sort of stick there. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you will always have it there now. Unless you type deactivate, then you'll go out of it. But we want to be sourced right now. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to use the Python package manager to install Flask because we don't have Flask. Uh, so to do that, we'll type pip, which is the package manager, install Flask. Now, if you don't have uh, Flask, <clears throat> or, I mean, if you don't have pip, which I think you should have, I think you get pip when you, when you do the virtual env thing. But if you don't have pip, uh, you can actually go, just Google uh, Python get pip or something. Uh, there should be an instruction here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how you get pip if you don't have it. <clears throat> All right, now we can actually run our application by typing Python made up pi. Cool. So as you can see here, running on localhost 5000. So if we go to localhost 5000, uh, we'll actually get not found. And that is actually our web application responding with not found because we haven't set up any routes yet. So to do that, I'm going to go to our code again. And we're going to go inside our app.py file. Now we want to add a route here. To do that, you're basically going to use the at sign, which is a decorator. And we're going to do app.route. Now, whatever we type in here will be the route. Let's use uh, for demonstrational purposes slash hello. Now, whatever function you use down here will be used for that route. And whatever you return in that function, will be the response and the function's name can be whatever you want so let's put some malarkey there for demonstrational purposes and return how you doing now if we go to our browser again and refresh we should see no change whatsoever but if we go to slash hello we'll see our message how you doing now Maybe we want to see this message on the first page, the front page. Now to do that, you can basically just remove hello and just keep the slash. I was sitting here editing the video and I noticed that uh, 
the video was sort of cut off, but uh, uh, what I was going to say in the last part of the video was that in the next part of this series we will start actually rendering HTML and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. I hope you will enjoy this video and have a wonderful evening or a wonderful day or a wonderful night or whichever time you are watching this video.